A few reflections on the fifth Sunday of Easter, April 28, 2024. The title that I given to these reflections is Being Rooted in the Abiding Love of Christ. As the Easter season progresses, there is a jubilant celebration of Christ's resurrection and the anticipation of Pentecost. As we reflect on the readings and the teachings of the fifth Sunday of Easter, we are called to re-evaluate our priorities and attitudes, striving to embody the love and grace of Christ in our interactions with others. The readings on the fifth Sunday of Easter insist that our faith is not meant to be passive, but rather active and engaged, expressed through acts of kindness, reconciliation and service to those in need. Moreover, they invite us to deepen our relationship with God, renew our commitment to love one another and embrace the abundant life that Christ offers to all who abide in him. I have three points to share with you. The first one is Easter narratives rooted firmly in the faith of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 15 verses 1 to 8, we see the metaphor of the vine and the branches drawn from Jesus' teachings. A metaphor is a figure of speech that makes a comparison between two unlike things by stating that one thing is another. This imagery of vine and branches stresses the importance of abiding in Christ, remaining connected to Him as branches are to a vine. It speaks to the profound intimacy of our relationship with God and reminds us of our dependence on Him for sustenance and spiritual nourishment. Just as branches draw their life-giving sap from the vine, so too do we draw our strength and purpose from our connection to Christ. The above idea enables us to examine the depth of our relationship with God and consider how closely we are abiding in Him. Are we actively seeking His presence and guidance in our lives? Or are we allowing distractions and worldly concerns to put us away? The Gospel passage challenges us to recommit ourselves to a life of faithfulness and discipleship. Rooted firmly in Christ, in Christ we draw our strength, purpose and sustenance to live a Christian life. The second point is, Easter narratives redefines the concept of love. Christian religion is a religion of love. The Easter narratives speak in abundance of the concept of love as a defining characteristic of discipleship. Jesus commands his followers to love one another as he has loved them. A love characterized by selflessness, compassion, acts of love, service, obedience, and sacrifice. In a world marked by division and discord, this call to love stands as a powerful testament to the life-changing power of Christ's message. Jesus says, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. This call to abide in Christ is a call to intimacy, to dwell continually in his presence and to cultivate a deep and abiding relationship with him. It's an invitation to surrender our own efforts and agendas, trusting in his provision and guidance. Moreover, it challenges us to prioritize intimacy with Jesus to allow his life to flow through us and to live as branches deeply rooted in the true vine. In doing so, we experience the abundant life that Christ promises to all who abide in him. Third point, Easter narratives transformed community life. As we continue to read the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 26 to 31, that is what we are reading today. The power of the resurrected Jesus becomes very apparent among the nascent Christian communities. Even the enemies of Christ become the powerful instruments 
of the proclamation of Christ as Lord. St. Paul is a powerful example. He brings a new life and vigor. We see the newfound faith changes the landscape of the whole Judeo-Roman world. It's a reminder indeed of God's ability to bring swift changes even beyond personal lives. When the community grows, there is giving and receiving, supporting and defending. The early church leaders like St. Barnabas becomes a bridge builder among the believers. We see a supportive and discerning community in nurturing and affirming the faith of individuals. There is also grace and forgiveness for those who seek reconciliation. The personal testimony of people invigorates the lives of faithful to be part of the family of Christ. There is amazement and surprise when the community strives hard to glorify God through works and words, God truly dwells. A few questions for self-reflection. The first one, what practices or habits do I have in place to nurture my relationship with Christ and remain connected to Him as the true vine? The second, are there areas of spiritual detachment or neglect in my life where I need to refocus my attention and recommit to abiding in Christ? The third, in what ways can I deepen my understanding and experience of abiding in Christ, allowing His life to flow through me more fully and abundantly? Finally, let's conclude these reflections with a short prayer based on Psalm 22. Heavenly Father, we lift our hearts to you in gratitude and praise, for you are the source of all blessings and the giver of life. You satisfy our deepest longings and sustain us with your boundless grace. You reign over all creation with wisdom and love, and your purposes prevail throughout the ages. We give thanks for your faithfulness and righteousness. Your steadfast love endures forever, and your mercy knows no bounds. Help us to trust in your unfailing providence and to surrender our lives to your divine will. Grant us the courage to proclaim your name boldly and to serve you faithfully, knowing that you are our refuge and strength. As we go forth in your name, may we be instruments of your peace and vessels of your grace, spreading your light in your world in need of your love. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.